Aaron and I first met in 2012 when we worked together at Wild Bills here in Banff. She lives here in Banff. Erin has been here in the Bow Valley for 15 years. She grew up in the Lower Mainland, which is Vancouver area, and Vancouver Island. Erin has two children and is lucky enough to also now have her parents in Banff as well. And uh, again, really appreciate you being here live for this, Erin, uh, and I will pass the mic off to you. And uh, I know you're gonna share about a, a your family history with uh, mental illness? Yeah, uh, so um, my family history, uh, you know, my dad is, has been diagnosed bipolar disorder and depression and anxiety. And I uh, only truly discovered this uh, in the last decade. Um, it was something that was not shared with me and my siblings, or if it was, I don't know if we just didn't pay attention to it. Um, when I was three, I guess he, my dad had a um, really bad manic episode um, to eventually, at that point, he didn't know, you know, any diagnosis. He was diagnosed with bipolar and has been on um, medication ever since. And again, I had no idea. Um, looking back, uh, hindsight, um, it's really interesting to see the connection between what kind of parent he was and what he was probably going through. And um, as me and my siblings grew up, you know, there was a huge disconnect with um, our relationship with our dad compared to our mom. And um, once I, you know, started to discover what he was going through and what he had been going through all our childhood, so many things started to connect and make sense. And um, about six years ago, he, uh, we had a close family member. My brother's wife was diagnosed with terminal cancer and she, um, I think from her diagnosis to passing away, it was about four months. And because of a lot of death in my dad's early life, he lost both his parents young, his siblings, um, it, I think, struck a strong chord. I mean, it hit us all hard, obviously, but um, he decided to take himself off his medication, which was a pretty heavy duty medication that he'd been on for over 30 years. And it, um, it led to a massive manic episode and um, uh, so massive that even talking to his family doctor and other doctors, they didn't believe that it could be a manic episode because it went on for months and months and months and he'd never felt better and he was not sleeping. He was spending money and he was, uh, no, had, he truly had never felt better. He was losing weight and was unrecognizable to us. And uh, once we finally managed to get him into um, the uh, hospital, uh, sorry, my son just arrived him. Oh, that's okay. It's, it's uh, real life. It's live. <laughs> um, we, and, you know, we basically had to convince the doctors that um, this charming, you know, lovely 72 year old was actually unrecognizable to us. He was not himself. He was, you know, he needed help. And um, despite him telling everyone that he felt his best he'd ever felt and, um, so fast forward a few months, we managed to obviously get him back on track, but the manic episode was so intense that he actually caused brain trauma and it led to um, early onset dementia. So he now um, is, obviously he's doing a lot better and um, you know he's very in touch with his doctors regularly. My mom is his full-time caregiver and um, like Scott mentioned, my parents now live in the Bow Valley. Uh, they relocated about five years ago from the Lower Mainland and um, in large part to have uh, my um, just support that uh, my mom especially needs. And um, uh, yeah, so it's it's been interesting though because about 10 years before this uh, happened, I was in my mid twenties and had my own kind of all of a sudden, uh, I, I didn't know what it was at the time, but I had my own kind of 
breakdown and um, triggered by nothing specific that I could see and um, realized, eventually was diagnosed uh, with depression, anxiety and um, didn't really know how to manage it except to take medication because, you know, that's the doctor that I was seeing. That's what they suggested. And um, it, I felt balanced. I felt good. I ended up uh, after that, I had two children and actually throughout my pregnancies, despite being very sick, never had felt better mentally. I was off my medication. And, um, and then when everything happened with my, first with my sister-in-law and then with my dad, um, when my daughter was only one, about six years ago, um, I started to connect the dots a lot with my own mental health and my dad's and really actually took from my dad that I wanted to do the exact opposite of what he did. He ignored it. He hid it. It wasn't something that was talked about. He was uh, a middle-aged man in the eighties when even up until, I don't know, the last decade or so, even now still, it's there's such a stigma attached to mental health and asking for help. And I think men especially, and, um, and seeing the disconnect that we ended up having with our own dad, um, it, it just made me want to do everything he didn't. And uh, so, you know, I, I thank him for teaching me that, um, you know, what he did sad, but what he, how he dealt with it was, you know, not what worked basically. And, uh, and that, you know, the things that I need to do to keep myself happy and healthy and to be a very connected in touch parent uh, is, is, you know, I need to really focus on, on what I'm doing for myself instead of hiding from it and not talking about it and not being open about it. And so, I mean, you know, unfortunately it is, like I said, it's sad that he, he didn't get to handle it, you know, in a healthy, open way, but uh, it sure taught me to, to not hide from it, so. Certainly, yeah. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you sharing so honestly and vulnerably, and, uh, you know, I can relate to what you said, because, you know, I, I know you're, you're younger than me, um, but I do know <laughs> that my, my dad was an 80s dad, and yeah, I think 80s dads and dads before that it's like you only go to the doctor if an arm's falling off or, or if you have like blood shooting out or something you absolutely know? yeah so that's I, how i felt we were raised absolutely yeah, yeah and um and you know i i just i love how you have uh you know honored your dad and embraced the lessons that you've received and uh yeah and i mean i i can resonate with that as well on my end and um, yeah, in, in the little bit of time we have left, I'm curious, like for you now, what, what do you do proactively for your mental health in, in like a minute or so? Yeah, no, I'll be real fast. Uh, well, first, I just want to say, I think it was Stacy, but one of your um, speakers this morning talked about how um, she shares her kids 50-50 and when she has her kids, she feels great and it's easy and it feels good. And when they're gone, she feels like she has no one to help and no one to fix and um, I can totally resonate with that. I, the busier I am, the better, even though I crave downtime, I actually mentally do a lot better when I'm busy. Um, I have to set myself challenges with, with everything, with um, yoga. I just finished a 30 day yoga challenge and I'm going to start a new 90 day yoga challenge because if I have that to hold me accountable, I will do it. If I don't, how, how do you find your motivation? And uh, the other big thing for me real quick is that about a year and a half ago, I cut sugar and gluten out of my diet. Oh, and wow. the sugar, I think, uh, was a game changer. Like it, it changed my mental state tenfold compared. And it doesn't even matter almost what else I'm doing. Uh, that was massive. So, you know, if you can do it, <laughs> it's uh, highly recommended to at least decrease your sugar intake. That was massive for me. So, yeah, no, thanks so much for that. Cause I, 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 I have had a sweet tooth my whole life and, Same. uh, and yeah, I got to admit, it's only been recently that I've really cut out sugar. I still have a tiny bit of things with sugar once in a while. However, it's very, very limited. And mm -hmm. as you would well know, I find it really impacts my moods having refined sugar. And and um, 
And yeah, I just kudos to you for doing the the 90 day challenge with yoga now. That's I can't wait. Can't wait. I'll keep yeah. you posted. Everyone will everyone will see it on uh Facebook. I know there's some been some people following me for the last three weeks. So uh yeah, it's good. It's keeps me keeps me going. So it's important. That's cool. Yeah. Well, once again, I really, really appreciate you being so honest and open with us, talking about family, because you know, in a public space, that's not the easiest thing to do. And you you dove right in so thank you so much Aaron and uh thanks for having yeah, us create create a wonderful rest of your day and thanks again for uh doing this you too and thank you for doing this this is a fantastic day it's great my pleasure take it easy bye Scott bye-bye